How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Are we in a bubble? As you guys know from my previous videos that I am pretty much a perma bear. Today I'm going to go over what has transpired, go over some evidence to support my theory that we are in a bubble, and also make a few modifications to my predictions going forward. Before I begin, this video is sponsored by Webull. Webull is a free trading app. Get it? It costs you nothing. Deposit $100 and you'll get two free shares of stock. If you sign up for this, I'll greatly appreciate it and it'll help me make more videos like these. Check out my referral link down in the video description below. Let's go over what happened so far. The S&P 500 has increased 35% since March 24th. Overall from the peak, it's down still about 10%. For the infection stuff, we still have 115,000 deaths so far in the United States. We have so far this year, 103 large-scale bankruptcy filings so far. Retail sales are down about 16%. There's an oil crash and GDP is forecasted to be reduced by 5%. Unemployment rate is at 13.3%. And if you take out the misclassification, it's more like 16.3%. Now I have to admit, and I could not have predicted this, that the market completely is ignoring all the real data going out there. Frankly, most people are probably a little fatigued looking at the updates of the number of people getting new infections or the number of deaths. You look at it for like two months already, and now it just becomes kind of mundane. It's the same thing every single day. Oh, the number went up a little bit more. It didn't go up a lot more. So as long as it's kind of roughly the same, people almost seem to not care anymore. Now, I think the stock market thinks the same as well. It's tending to not care about this infection stuff. It's looking at other kinds of news instead. But I think it's going to start caring about the infection stuff if the rate of infection increases by a lot. Now, there's going to be small fluctuations, but we're going to have to see maybe like at least 30% increase before the stock market starts caring about it again. Let me talk a little bit about my TVIX trade here. I bought in around $150 or so. It rocketed up all the way to 220. My intention was not actually to sell it just because it went up a little bit. It went up by a good 30% at its maximum. But my intention here, and I want to fully realize it because if I don't, I'm going to regret it because if later on it does exactly the thing that I'm saying, then I would really regret selling it early just because I made a little bit of profit. My anticipation is still that volatility may go up for the next week or so. And if the stock market really freaks out, if there's a second infection or something, which I don't think there really is going to be, it's just going to be kind of mild. But if something really drastic happens, and I could not have predicted this, I think the volatility would spike all the way up to 300, 400% again. So in the comments, I noticed a lot of people saying, hey, you know, it went up. I'm so thankful that, you know, I listened to you when you talked about it on a video and they copied me. I'm very, very concerned for these people that tries to do the same thing that I'm doing. And mainly because these stocks or extremely volatile, they're kind of like playing with gasoline, they're just on fire and you don't really want to hold it for all that long. I know being a finance YouTuber, you kind of have to set an example. So I have to put like a disclaimer on this, that this play that I'm doing for TVIX is an extremely, extremely risky thing. That's why I put so little in it. Now I want to talk a little bit about what I thought of the stock market back at mid-February or so when I sold out of the stock market. I forget exactly when I sold it, but it was right before the dip. And at that point, I really did think about putting money into TVIX, except I did not, you know? So this is kind of like, oh, I should have, I could have. I also thought about buying a whole bunch of other things, right? I thought about buying cruise lines. I thought about buying airlines and stuff. And look, you know, the last week or two, it rocketed up and, you know, too bad, right? You can't kick yourself over not deciding to buy something just because you thought about it, right? In hindsight, it always sounds, you know, like a good idea. Moving on, I want to take this time to update what I think the market is going to do going forward because my views on what's going to happen changed a little bit in the recent week. Now, here's my new thinking. I think most people are wearing masks. Some people are not wearing masks, but a large portion of the population is trying to follow this social distancing thing. All the states are trying to reopen the economy, although slowly. So people are doing it very, very carefully. 
and they're closely monitoring the infection rate. So I am sure that once they're monitoring it and they see there's something going wrong because they relax a little bit too much, they're going to like tense up again and then go, okay, you know, we're doing something wrong. We have to, you know, walk back the release in restrictions a little bit. And so it's going to be fluctuating like this for quite some time. I feel like the current infection rate, the rate is gonna stay roughly the same. We may see it increase a little bit and then we're gonna change the policies a little bit, make it more restrictive and then it's gonna go down. But then through from this point on all the way to December and March of 2021, I feel like the policies are going to relax and tighten and they're gonna try to modulate it so that we don't get too many infections, but we're also not gonna do it so restrictive that we're gonna get a significant reduction of zero infections at all. Many businesses are indeed trying to cope with all these restrictions and some of them, they're saying with these restrictions, they cannot remain profitable if they can only have people sitting, social distancing, reducing the number of capacity and they can only sit outside and stuff a lot of restaurants are not going to be profitable when they're not near at least over 50% capacity because I think the current restriction is probably what we can sort of live with for a long period of time. I think we may reach some sort of equilibrium where there's an acceptable amount of infection, an acceptable amount of deaths, which is not greatly more than what it is currently, which is not greatly more than a really, really bad flu season. But I think at this equilibrium of restrictions, I think a lot of restaurants is not gonna be able to survive. And here's the sticking point, because if they cannot survive, this means there's gonna be a trickling effect on the economy. The restaurant businesses is not gonna do well. They need enough people to fill these airplanes in order to become profitable. There's no way around it. I see more and more bankruptcies coming in the future. People are just kind of crossing their fingers, thinking that if they can hold on for so long so far, that they hope the rules are gonna be relaxed so then they can open up their business again. Now the equilibrium point is something that I am kind of unsure of. At what kind of rules can we actually live with for the rest of the year? Because this is gonna be around and we're gonna to try to open up the economy with certain restrictions where there's an acceptable amount of deaths and acceptable amount of infections. When the $600 extra unemployment benefit runs out, that's gonna be big news as well. It's gonna cause some concern in the stock market. But let's say the extra benefit runs out and it doesn't get replenished, but we gotta know that most states have up to about 63 weeks worth of unemployment. So this is like more than a year worth of unemployment that people can get. And you can get like up to $1,800 uh, per month uh, at its maximum for unemployment in California at least. But most the homes that you can live in over here, you may have more than an $1,800 mortgage payment. So if you happen to be unemployed, you're not gonna be able to pay the mortgage uh, eventually it's going to get foreclosed on so there's going to be some of that going on going forward my predictions going forward has been sort of gloomy it's kind of like an armageddon type of scenario and yeah i i agree it's kind of like on the pessimistic side but we have already seen when it rains it sort of pours first we get the infections then as a result of that we have the oil crash and we also have the protests going on and i feel like there's something coming up so there's something up its sleeves that maybe mother nature has yet to throw at us or maybe the economy itself, something like a new wrench, a new bad thing seems like it's gonna happen. So here are some things that might be on the horizon. Maybe the invasive hornets, Zika mosquitoes has been spotted in the Bay Area of California. There might be a war outbreak, maybe from North Korea or whatnot. I think if there is, they might be capitalizing on this virus outbreak because a lot of economies, they're just kind of like in this era. So other countries that are kind of like waiting to attack, this is like the perfect time to attack because then they're not as prepared and maybe the Navy, you know, they're gonna have issues with having a lot of people together. And this might be a time where people that wants to wage wars might just jump at this opportunity. Now, of course, I don't want war to happen, but this is a slight possibility that 
you know, I'm, I'm thinking it might, it might just happen with so many crazy things happening. And when you have a new thing coming in, a new issue coming in, this is when it could shock the markets. And during this time, seems more probable for something new to happen than when everything else is absolutely quiet. Thanks for watching this video, just some random predictions. So how am I gonna invest because of all this? I still think the stock market is somewhat in a very, very dangerous territory in a bubble. I mean, what more do you want? Do you wanna stay in the stock market and think that it's gonna go up to all time highs during this time? Especially with economic output down so much, it just doesn't make sense. For a lot of people, if you happen to time the market and you bought at the bottom and it came up all this way, it might be a good time to take some profits. You guys know, for me personally, I already sold out long ago. I'm just sitting out, sitting on it, on the sidelines, just waiting for the market to finally come to the realization that, oh my gosh, you know, your hair is burning right now. The house is burning. Everything is burning around you, but then you're still laser focused on your video game. You know, the things are... Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video. <laughs> Don't forget to check out my Weeble referral link down in the video description below. Give me a like, comment down below. Let me know if you're in or out of the market and push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching.